Yesterday I got so frustrated with sanding and painting this thing. I kind of messed up our holes that we're drilling and I get I, I got anxious. I get a little upset. It is completely rotten. are the tales of Boab. What's up everybody? You're in store for one epic episode. We're gonna catch you up real fast once we get to the boatyard, but first I need to walk this bad boy to the mechanic. Whoa. Oh! Okay, well we wanted to to film that last scene and then we had to charge the camera because it was about to die and I was gonna walk this to the mechanics and then I I just decided to give it a kick just for fun and what you've just witnessed is something we've been dealing with where the bike won't start for for like a day or two after heavy rain and then all of a sudden it'll start up so I guess we're gonna use the bike for our for our little errand run as long as we have it and then if it does it again then I'll take it to old Mr. Mechanic. nuts. <laughs> yep, and now we got some wood. So this block of wood was used as a spacer on the underneath part of our cockpit floor. It was, um, yeah, so if you can imagine, cockpit floor, steering cables come down through here, through the idler, and then they connect into the steering drum. So this was just to get the wires at the right angle, but it is completely rotten. It wasn't treated at all, and we had a really leaky cockpit floor, which we completely rebuilt. That's where this comes in. This is another piece that we need to repurpose. This is our steering idler. So this is what was on the other side, the underneath side of this block of wood underneath our cockpit floor, getting rained on, getting seawater. So it was all just rusted out. This thing used to be actually a lot thicker. Um, these flakes just like literally just fell off of it. Um, what I did is sprayed it with some WD-40 to stop the rust from happening. I cleaned it up as much as I could. We were thinking about buying a whole new part, but it's actually, it's still pretty solid. Like it's thinner than it was. And the new part sold by Edson is like a five, $600 item. So what we're gonna do instead is clean it up really nicely, treat it with some of this Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Another thing that we had to do was de-gunkify all of these holes that our hardware for this rudder is going to be screwed, bolted into. This stuff was just full of gunk, um, bits of sea creatures, old decaying uh, shells and who knows what else. So we sprayed a bunch of WD-40 in there. Really cleaned it out and now the bolts fit and she's uh, she's ready to go. These bolt holes had to be de also. This is the integral part that holds our rudder on. Thanks to a lot of our commenters, we learned that the big nut goes behind the small nut. So if you didn't know that, now you do. And we made sure to really wrench them tight against each other. So that was a quick fix. So the bolts that hold our coupler in were a little long and causing us some issues. We had our little nut um, idea, but many commenters said 
do not do that. That is a bad idea. So we got all the bolts measured. We're going to need to cut off three eighths of an inch. And we have our little bag with our notes. And we're going to take these babies in and get these bolts cut to size. These holes were a hoop to drill. This is where our Edson pedestal is going to mount. We made sure to drill, fill them up with epoxy, and then re-drill them out. That way they're nice and waterproof. I made this real nice and shiny by scrubbing it with a wire brush. Oh, Joel. Oh. What the heck are you doing down there? Uh, just pulling a trick that your dad taught us. This is where our scuppers come out, right here and right here. And you can see now that's on there really good. The trick was a trick that Michael learned on the farm this year, the heat gun. So it's really hard to get get in here and get back there. So you just, you're all contorted. The good thing we're doing yoga. We wanted to secure that really well because once we start putting stuff together down here, then you really have no shot at getting back there. So pulled the hose off and just used the heat gun and heated it up all around, got it pretty toasty, and then squeezed some three in one, some three in one oil around the inside, and then it just it just it just went right on like super easy. And I just pushed it all the way on and then managed to tighten that hose clamp as tight as I can possibly get it. Same with this one over here. And so that job is done. Michael, what did you discover and um, how did you manage to overcome? Um, I wouldn't say we're quite to an overcoming place yet. What we were hoping on was not actually taking apart this stuffing box that we have with our rudder shaft. Um, I started to do some cleaning though, at which point we discovered the flax inside. This was before the whole thing was apart. Um, and then I just test fitted it onto our, our rudder shaft here and it was really loose. So this is actually upside down. It goes the other way, but this is how the stuffing box goes onto the rudder shaft in the boat. And like, as you can see, even up here where it's thick, there's, there's a lot of play. There's a lot of space in here. So that is not making a good seal. Two factors are causing that. One, the flax packing inside of here is really gnarly, super old. It's it's falling out. When you pull it out and show us. It's crumbling. It's um yeah, it just comes apart in my hands. Mm. But it's probably pretty old. Yeah. Also, when we removed this rudder shaft for the first time, um, some of the boatyard guys were around and they were helping us to clean up all of our hardware and pieces. And before we knew it, one guy grabbed this thing. And I mean, he's a magician with a, an angle grinder, but he just started grinding the <laughs> out of our shaft. So I think it's a couple millimeters smaller than it used to be. So we're definitely gonna have to replace this, uh, this packing material in order to seal up this rudder shaft. Oh, just had to wait for the dogs to quiet down there. Okay, we are prepping this pedestal for some paint. Doing some sanding, washing. We're gonna rinse it with vinegar a little bit later. It had a little bit of blistering going on in all of these bare areas, so the paint was coming off. And even on the underside, the aluminum does not look so good in some of these holes. Ultimately, there's nobody here that's making me repurpose this pedestal but yesterday I got so frustrated with sanding and painting this thing, trying to make it perfect, and it just wasn't turning out. And I just wanted to be done. I told Joel I just wanted to be done with the whole thing. And so he was like, okay, let's pack it up. Let's walk away. We can be done. That's as simple as that. But that's not really what I want. What I really want, I think, is a state of peace, a state of acceptance of what's happening. Um, and, and to go about doing things in the best possible way that I know how. So it matters how I do things, not what I'm doing.
there are still times like yesterday when I kind of messed up our holes that we're drilling and I get I, I got anxious I get a little upset back in the day I used to think that there was people pulling strings and I was a puppet and I was being forced to do all these things in my life you're the only one making yourself do this because of your desires and because you want you do and that's the only, that's all there is to it. You cannot be controlled unless you allow yourself to be controlled. And the only way that you do that is by desiring. The fact is, um, you can go anywhere, you can travel the world, but nothing really changes until you do. Focus. Boab! Lola dipped. How come you're so quiet?